So Joshua West, tell me about your life. What led you to music? Why you're on Clay's deck? Well, it really all began for me when uh, I was just a young boy living on a farm in the middle of the city when uh, all of a sudden I found this, you know, guitar in a barn with a goat and uh, was all I could do to, oh, hey. Hey, man. <laughs> you all ready? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Film Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Clay Sports, Sports Sessions. Sessions. Joshua, I want to welcome you down here to Howard Holler. You've been here a few times. So this is unlike my other guests, you've actually hung out with me on the deck. <laughs> We're just kind of on the porch. The porch. We're just making it official today. So with everybody, I've kind of told every told the people were pretending or watching this, how I met the person here. So Joshua and I met back in, I was working for a place called Color Express. I worked with a gentleman named Brown Biggers. His name is Fred Brown Biggers. Yeah. And you knew him. And you would come in and he would help you. But one day I was playing Jellyfish, see if you had the same recollection. And he started singing along with Jellyfish. And I knew that we would be friends. And we actually, from about that point on, we became friends. Uh, What's your name? Know me. Doby? <laughs> All right, so this is Joshua West. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the questions because I could tell you a lot about him, but we're going to let him. So we do a three-minute thing. You've watched one of these. I think you sat yes. in on one of these yeah. with our friend Jerry. Um, I was behind the scenes. You were on camera. I tried to be behind the oh, scenes. You were on camera. I with bled camera. through. Yeah. With a camera. <laughs> so you get three minutes and... Um, in that three minutes, just tell me who Joshua West is and go. Oh, Joshua West. He's a father, husband, artist. I just say artist because I don't know. I mean, you know, I do visual art for a living and for fun. But uh, sonic art is uh, kind of my passion. I <clears throat> didn't start. I started playing like really late in life. Like I was 15 when I first started playing and uh, just uh, I was hooked. It was like, I thought I was, you know, I was set on this path for visual art and then all of a sudden I <coughs> got music and there you go. But uh, yeah. So as a musician, you know, I'm really a singer who plays instruments. Um, I'm a songwriter, but primarily I'm a singer. I like to think that, uh, that's my my one big talent. But you know how they always say, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. I won't say that I've mastered it, but uh, certainly it's the one thing that I do and people kind of stand up and take notice. You sure it's because I mean, you're good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to keep that. <laughs> you know... Oh, he's very good, years. by the way. He's very good. <laughs> and that's why I was so excited when uh, Clay <clears throat> asked me to be on this, because every time that I'm hanging out on his porch, this is all we do. We, we just laugh. Just laugh and laugh, and I knew that it would just be a fun time, and uh, I was like, sure, I can play guitar too, but I just want to come hang out. That's awesome. <laughs> Tell us about your records you got out. Uh, so digital two, digital two, yes. So in uh, 2022, I released a digital digital only. It's uh, easy for you album. to say. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, the Dark Tower. Yes, and it Very was inspired good. by one of my favorite series from my favorite one of my favorite authors. Uh, the yes, um, uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. And what I wanted to do was, you know, have this concept album of, you know, just 
telling the story, mm-hmm. but like each song was a snippet along the line of like the seven novels. So it was this really kind of like, I don't know. I mean, like it was, it was very, I guess, lofty in my, uh, in the you goal. can actually use the term that's misused so often. It's an epic undertaking. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I remember when you were writing it. Yeah. But, um, it was really, really fun. And so I just put it out on digital because it was like just totally something I did for fun. And I even made up characters of like who was in the band. Like it was, uh, based on the, the characters or some of the characters from the novel, but it was like variations of my name. It was like Joshua. Um, oh, what's the bear's name? Shardik. Yeah. Joshua Shardik and Abe Maturin, the turtle. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was just, it was fun. And it was just a three piece. So I wrote everything like on the bass and had like synthesizer and drums. Right. That was it. No, awesome. no guitar whatsoever. It was, uh, it was really a fun, odd thing. And then the uh, album before that was uh, shit. <laughs> I can't even remember. Cut. No. Uh, the, the the album before that was one way or the other. Yes. Which that was a uh, mostly a project that I did, you know, sequestered in my studio during COVID. Um, the title track was something I sent to my friend uh, Jonathan Wilson yep. and he you know produced that and then I kind of tried to emulate yep. his style through the rest of the record but uh, I mean I hate that it happened when it did because it was a fantastic record I really I mean like to this day I'm so proud of it and it was just like it hit at the wrong moment I released a record at the same time I did with my friend Bren um, Clay and Bren out to lunch. Nobody knows it exists, but same thing. I have a copy. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Well, I have a copy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly.
tonight. Who you brought me this week? Who am I supposed to act like I know this time? So for question number two, um, I think this is what we asked. I want you to name your three biggest influences mm -hmm. and tell me why or your three favorites. It doesn't have to be influences, yeah. but three favorites or three influences and you tell me why. I think I'll go with influences because, I mean, really, favorites, I, I don't, you can't narrow favorites down to just three, but uh, hell, I probably can't even narrow influences down to three, but I'll start with singing. My biggest influence is uh, Clay Howard. <laughs> no, really, it's <laughs> so my biggest influences as a singer. I would have to start with Sam Cooke. Okay. When I was a kid, we had a cassette of Sam Cooke that was. Now he's just... the guy that played the butcher on the Brady Bunch, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So butcher <laughs> Sam. I know he's saying yeah. Alice. There's a reason why Alice was, you know, hot for the meat man. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, good Lord, <laughs> it's just fucking went so far off the rails. <laughs> I had this cassette of the live uh, performance from 63 at, I think it was like Newport or something <clears throat> like that. But, I mean, not only was he just, I mean, like a master of his instrument, I mean, like, Seeing he was just <clears throat> incredible, but he was a master of like performing. I mean, like he worked that crowd. I don't know if you've ever heard that recording, but yeah. it's just so insane because like, you know, he's, I mean, it, it's like typical of the times where, I mean, like he's singing and you have, you know, like women swooning that you can audibly hear in the audience because of his voice, because of his, I mean, like, he was a good looking guy. Sure. But just his, you know, on stage persona was just so, like, I'm here to melt all of you. I mean, it was just amazing. And I was like, I totally want to be able to do that. And, I mean, you know, not that I've reached that <clears throat> level, but that's biggest influence on my singing from early age. Just, We're just going to that. play peekaboo around the fern. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> there he is. Hi, Clay. So here on two Sasquatches and a fern. <laughs> so there's one. So there's one. Um, from a songwriting perspective, you know, of course I would love to say, you know, Paul McCartney, Beatles, you know, I mean, because of course they've been a huge influence, but... I honestly, you know, I'm going to riff off of, you know, what Jerry was talking about. I mean, Tom Petty. Yeah. I mean, I learned particularly that, you know, the last album, you know, I mean, like it was very influenced by, you know, Wildflowers. Yes. I mean, that was. Which is uh, a perfect album. Yes. Absolutely perfect. I mean, like, there's yeah. no. And I even, used to say almost perfect, but no. Even like the extra stuff they're, they've yeah. added post, you know, his yeah. death. It's all perfect. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, imagine writing stuff like that that was like, this was cut from the album. Right. Third one. No, 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 hold on. Let's, let's examine that some more. Okay, so Tom Petty. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the whole trying to, you know, make something that moves people over something that's kind of simplistic. And I mean, like, I'm not <clears throat> reducing that in any way. That album. Let's talk about that album. Yes. For a second. You said trying to do something to, for other people. I truly believe the reason that album is so good is because Tom wrote that album for Tom. Yeah. And it sounds like Tom's singing to himself on that, if you think about it. And that's what's so perfect about it, because he truly, and we've had this conversation, and we've had this conversation about art versus commerce. Yeah. Now, granted, Tom's in a different place with his marriage of art and commerce that he could do anything he wanted oh, yeah. anyway financially. He's, got, he's got the commerce <laughs> kind of covered <laughs> but that i mean i think that's what happens when you i mean that was originally gonna be called songs from the garage now yeah. that album i mean he was writing songs for tom i think he i don't know if the divorce had happened yet or if it was after i don't know the timeline i don't remember but 
that I think is exactly why we write songs. Because yeah. you write it to impress. I don't know. I do. I try to impress myself. I try to write something that I want to listen to again. And if somebody yeah. else listens to it, that's fantastic. But I think that's why that album. Yeah. Oh not no. To take I mean, away from your answer. About perfect. Why, but yeah. No, that's a perfect <clears throat> explanation. And I mean, like I've. I guess you know, being older, I've gotten. Hey, bird. I've oh, gotten. Okay. Oh, those. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Bear's much more needy. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, being older, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm not. You know, I have no illusions of like being a rock star. I get signed. No, I ain't get signed. <laughs> but really, you know, just like I write and record for me. Yep. And you know, for the tens of other people that are you know, listening to it on Spotify. You've seen a dozen faces and you rocked them all. Exactly. A dozen faces. <laughs> That's a Jerry Chapman quote, by the way. That's awesome. So, Fit on you, Jerry. From, our, from, well, I guess that would actually be Charlie's quote. That was Charlie who said that. Uh, day. Jerry's a roadie with me. We wrote yes. Three, I'm going to go a different road. And um, I'm not like a great producer but i've learned so much more about it in the last like several years and i'm gonna go production because that's kind of like the third element of what i do now as far as you know my original music is you know like where does that go how does it how is it going to sound you know and i would say the biggest influence on that is probably my friend jonathan yeah who uh jonathan wilson by the way uh great guy incredible musician um and we shit we were playing in bands in high school my first band in high school the model citizens if you're not familiar with him he um i think he's done the last several of roger waters tours yeah as a musician what's he yeah, playing he, with him? he plays guitar and sings okay uh sings a lot of the and that's just the tip of the iceberg yeah he he spouse with jackson brown and that whole group of um California yeah, Laurel Cole. Canyon, yeah. the 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 original Laurel Canyon, yeah. and then uh, he was actually credited on uh, in a lot of circles with you know the revival of right, that Laurel sounds, Canyon. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think production wise, you know Dawes, Father John Misty, it, yeah. Angel Olsen, uh, the last uh, Billy Strings album. I mean, he's he's got street cred, and I mean the fact that you know we're friends and he produced one of my songs that was like, oh, well, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah. But it really, you know, kind of gave me like that benchmark of like, okay, well, this is what I strive to. And also just, I mean, I like, he's a very, you know, retro musician. Yeah. So, you know, I like authentic sounds, but I also, you know, I've been exploring a lot more sonically with, you know, a lot of, the electronic music and stuff like that to, you know, it, it, I used to be like, Oh, it's, I'm a purist. I want to, you know, have like just a, an authentic, you know, Hammond and Rhodes and which, I mean, you know, that's awesome, but it's also, you know, you can't stay static when it comes to production. Um, always trying to, to grow. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's what really has, you know, kind of moved me over the last, few years is uh, i feel like i've you know really kind of pushed myself to grow in that area it's made me a better musician maybe a better songwriter my 
my whole life just thinking I had plenty of time to change my ways and stop drinking it was a victimless cry Sunday So, uh, top three songs, it's funny, because, you know, having seen <clears throat> Clay's prior uh, Clay's Porch Sessions, I was like, oh, well, what would be the top three songs, blah, 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 and, you know, you go through it in your head, but um, it's really kind of easy, because there are three, like, really important songs in my life. Mm -hmm. One is Thor. I was going to say that. Song I wrote for my wife. There you go. We're just gonna keep on talking. So number two is a song that was, you know, a song that I wrote years prior to entering this random, you know, songwriting uh, contest. But it is an award-winning song. Joshua won the Don Gibson uh, Songwriter Award in nineteen. Nineteen? No, twenty. Uh, twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. In Shelby. In Shelby, North Carolina. Won $1,000, too. I did. One of the big checks. 
still hanging on my wall. Never cashed it. There's not a bank big enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was so stupid. Second song is called Fall to Pieces. Yes. And um, it was a song. It, it's funny because all three of these songs are love songs, but different stages of love and different, you know, kind of ideas of love. But they're all in 3-4. So I could just like, it's like my life in a waltz. We're just gonna keep on talking. So yeah, the last one is uh, the title track from the my last released album uh, in physical form, uh, one way or the other. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, that one's a love song of a different kind. Is it in four four? It's not. It's in three four. You like three four? I do like three. I'd four. like to dig into that for a second. Then let's do it. Do you consciously do it, or does it just happen? We're just gonna keep on talking. I guess my soul resonates in three four. I don't know. That's, it's just some, it's something about it. It just like all three songs are probably you know the most heartfelt. I agree. Thanks for coming down to Howard Holler and Clay's Port Sessions, man. man get thanks the for hell out me. of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Good riddance. Chasing your ghost Even though you are near Chasing your ghost Lost you because of my fear I've not given up hope I'm holding it so dear Chasing your ghost Love ain't never so clear Driving on empty But I'm moving somehow Yeah, my heart is seen plenty Seems like my soul is on trial Yeah, I'm driving on empty The end is coming up now Chasing your goals, I carry on somehow. I've not given up hope. Holding it so dear Chasing your goals Cause love ain't never so clear Driving on LG But I'm moving somehow My heart is seen plenty Seems like my soul is on trial yeah, I'm driving on empty The end is coming up now Chasing your goals I'll carry on somehow I'm driving on empty But I'm moving somehow My heart is seen plenty Seems like my soul is on trial I'm driving on LG The end is coming up now Chasing your goals I carry on somehow Tag it Yeah, I'm chasing your goals I carry on somehow That's a brand new one.